plastic. Plastic bags, plastic bottles, plastic wraps, plastic toys, microplastic, plastic everything. We find it everywhere, and it's near impossible to find a human-occupied space without it. News headlines constantly warn us of what happens when we discard single-use plastics. A quick Google image search shows beaches and ocean patches covered in bottles and wildlife choking on straws and clear bags. Thousands of NGOs are dedicated to cleaning up garbage patches and other cell-recycled accessories in order to save money for the cause. And of course, there is cause for concern. According to research from the University of Georgia, our species has produced a whopping 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic as of 2015. To give you an idea of what that looks like, it's the equivalent of 822,000 Eiffel Towers floating around in Earth's oceans. Their prediction is that by 2050, the number will reach 12 billion tons. But plastic bottles and six-pack rings aren't the only enemies of our oceans. One of the lesser-known threats to marine life is ghost gear. You're watching Explore Mode, and today we're going underwater to explore what exactly ghost gear is. Ghost gear is not as easy to spot as common plastic waste, hence its name. The gear mentioned refers to abandoned fishing gear, that is, nets, long lines, hooks, fish traps, lobster pots, and any man-made fishing equipment that's been lost or discarded at sea. The problem with ghost gear is not only that they will take about 600 years to break down, they are engineered to withstand harsh marine conditions after all, but that they were designed to catch marine life, and they continue to catch fish even after being discarded for years. This is known as ghost fishing. You see, the tangled mess of nets can become quite big, trapping any critter that's unfortunate enough to swim into them. Ghost nets create a deadly cycle. The corpses of smaller and snared animals attract larger predators, who then become caught themselves, and so the cycle goes on. The absolute worst type of nest is the gill net, also known as the drift net. It is essentially a wall of mesh with holes roughly the size of certain fish's heads. Some float just below the water surface, and others are placed near the seabed. Once a fish swims into the wall, its head gets caught by the gills. Wiggling will only trap it even more. Animals who are lucky enough to escape from gill nets end up dragging the gear with them and eventually may die of extreme fatigue or infection from their wounds. Gill nets are so detrimental to marine life, they have been banned from international waters by the UN. Data from the UK's World Animal Protection shows that 100,000 whales, dolphins, seals, and turtles die or suffer injuries due to ghost gear each year. In 2016, a North Atlantic right whale was trapped and died while tangled in ghost nets. These whales are critically endangered. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, there are only 450 left. But how much of this gear is really haunting the ocean? Available data estimates there is roughly 600,000 to 800,000 metric tons of derelict gear entering Earth's oceans each year. And if you think this is a new problem that we've just stumbled upon, we're sorry to say that it's not. Ghost fishing was first mentioned during the 16th session of the FAO Committee on Fisheries. That was in 1985, over 30 years ago. Now, let's get some perspective. We'll sail over to the Pacific Ocean and take a look. Nestled between Hawaii and California resides the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the biggest out of four massive trash nests in our oceans. It covers roughly 1.6 million square kilometers. That's three times the size of France. As for its mass, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch weighs about 80,000 tons. That's the equivalent to 500 jumbo jets. The plastic floating inside the patch is classified into four groups. Type H, which is any plastic in sheets, film, or just plain hard plastic. Type P, or pre-production plastics, which are the raw plastic material usually in the form of pellets, cylinders, or discs. Type F, which are the bits and pieces made of styrofoam or other foamed materials. And Type N, which is made up of plastic lines, fishing nets, and ropes. This is, of course, the category where ghost gear falls in. And according to the Ocean Cleanup, ghost gear makes up 46% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. 
That's almost half of all the floating trash. Check out this graph created by the China Dialogue Ocean using data from the Global Ghost Gear Initiative. Each dot represents the location of reported missing gear from April 1981 to October 2018. During that time, 46,000 items were lost. More than half were not retrieved and for all we know are still lost at sea. But it's not all doom and gloom. Groups of activists dedicated to cleaning up the ocean often go on ghost-busting expeditions, diving deep to remove ghost nests from the seabed. On June 18th, a crew from a Californian cargo ship removed 40 tons of ghost nets as it cruised the Pacific Ocean for a month, making it the largest Pacific Ocean cleanup to date. 40 tons in a month! That's over a ton per day! You don't need to sail across the ocean in a cargo ship to find ghost gear, though. In May, Dutch and Greek divers retrieved two metric tons of fishing gear from a section in Greece's northern coast. A group of just 15 volunteers in Hawaii removed 4,000 pounds of ghost nets off of Lanakai Beach. Sadly, there's more than enough ghost gear out there for humans to deal with. So how can we deal with ghost gear? Well, according to the Global Ghost Gear Initiative and the United Nations Environment Program, educating fisheries about the impact of ghost gear is a great place to start. Apart from that, marking fishing gear during manufacturing could help in the process of retrieving it should it get lost. Using biodegradable materials to make fishing pots and other gear could also help minimize the environmental impact of traps that become stranded and make it easier for them to be recycled or reused when removed. Fishing gear producers could also provide incentives for fishermen to return old and discarded nets and report lost equipment. Some countries and companies have already been implementing these types of programs for years. A good example of this is South Korea. The Asian country started its derelict gear buyback program back in 2003 in several of its towns and cities, paying fishermen in exchange for some types of fishing gear. The NOAA Marine Debris Program works side-by-side -side with fisheries by connecting them with ports where they can discard their fishing gear for free. So far, the program has collected 2.1 million pounds of ghost gear from 41 areas in the United States. Boreo, a California company, has taken a creative take on ghost net recycling. Using derelict nets, the company makes surfing gear, skateboards, sunglasses, and even collaborated with Jenga to create a version of the classic family game made of recycled fishing nets. Another company called Ghost Nets Australia uses the discarded gear as weaving material to create mats, bags, baskets, and other types of indigenous art. They also have an online database where communities living in coastal cities can research what types of nets have washed into their shores. Ironically, ghost gear also affects the fishing industry. In the words of Nick Malos, director of the Trash Free Seas program at Ocean Conservancy, When there is a large amount of ghost gear out there, it affects fishers' bottom lines. It affects the future sustainability of otherwise harvestable catch and often it prevents them from spending more time on the water. There you have it. Unfortunately, not all fisheries would respond positively to these solutions. One of the biggest hurdles for ghost gear is illegal fishing. Oftentimes, fishermen on board illegal fishing vessels will purposely discard their equipment into the ocean to avoid being detected or paying fines. And with illegal fishing not being regulated, well, that leaves us with a constant flux of unaccounted for ghost gear. Thanks again for watching Explore Mode and for literally diving deep with us this time. If you liked this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. You can also check out our two previous videos and stay tuned for more explainers every Friday. In the meantime, leave your Explore Mode on.